Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to show you how you can test a node module and a node module that you install off of NPM on your computer without having to add it to your project. So let's say you have this module you are interested in adding and using in your application, but you want to test it beforehand. It has a specific function. In my case, let's say that I was trying to use Lodash because I want some way to check whether or not an object contains some deeply nested key without having to do some iterations over the object's keys and then the nested object's keys and so on and so forth. So I know there's a library for that. I've read the documentation and it looks like it's doing what I what it's supposed to do, but I also want to test it on my computer. The reason I created this video is that I have been surprised by the amount of people who don't know that you can also install node modules in directories other than your your root project directory where package json is and my way of of doing this, my way of testing node modules is that I just go into TMP. I don't know what's the alternative on Windows, but you should have some directory. Just create an empty directory and CD into it. And I just hit NPM or yarn in my case, yarn add lodash, right? And it will go on NPM, it will pull Lodash. So for me, it was really quick because I also had it, I had it installed on multiple projects and so Yarn cached it. So now in TMP, I have node modules. Sorry, so it's node modules. And I have Lodash over here. So what I can do right now, because I have Node.js installed on my machine, I just type node and this puts me in the Node.js REPL the read evaluate print loop or something like that. And now that I'm here, what I can do is I can use the require function to basically require the module I just installed. And because I have node modules in TMP in the directory from where I launched the node interpreter, I can use const lodash. Let's actually put the the pretty underscore over there. Require equals require, and I even get some autocomplete, so this is a bit of tab completion. And lodash, right? So now I have lodash over here, and let's say I create an object, so it's const O, which is an object that has a property A with the value of 1, B with the value of 2, and then C, that's an object that has a property D, that's another object that has a property E, which is has a value of 3. And now I close this. So my object has this shape. And I want to test that lodash.has does what it says it does. So I need to pass it based on the documentation. The first argument is the object and then the second argument is the key or the path I'm looking for. So in my case, the object is O. Now let's say I'm looking for A, right? Works. Let's say I'm looking for A dot B. It doesn't work. Why? Because the shape of my object is A, individual key with the value one, B, individual key with the property with the value 2 and then let's look for what let's look for c so c is true i have a c key c dot d also true c dot d dot e also true and then f you would probably um you probably already know what this could be used for so for example if you have api calls that return uh, something that has the this shape, like it's result or response, I don't know, response.data, and then somebody designed that um, API poorly, and so you also get dot .data, dot .item, dot .items, you know, if, if 
if you're doing JSON parse on this, just like this, just go json.parse. If this does not exist, well, if any of the items on this nesting hierarchy doesn't exist, you're in trouble. So this is where you would use something like lodash has and look for this deeply nested items property, which is probably an, an object or an array of some sort. And there's also uh, another option for testing to, to come back to the, the, the main topic of the video, which was how do you test node modules that you install off of NPM locally without necessarily adding it to your project. Because the problem is if you add that module to your project, then you have to wait for what live reload, nodemon, something to kick in so you install it. Then you need to require it in your application somewhere. Then you need to uh, call it. Then you need to somehow uh, display the output. So you either have to use console log or put a breakpoint or make some sort of hack in your front end just to uh, display whatever the result of this is. Then, I don't know, put in the code, save it, then Nodemon kicks in, refreshes the page. You go where you have your functionality, um, whatever page or part of your application you're you're affecting with this and then you get to see the output which is which is kind of wrong and it's a bit counterproductive and that's why I wanted to to create this video to to demo this to you so the second option would be to open something like code pen up and just hit this sprocket over here and they have this neat little external resource search so you just type lodash and they give you lodash and then you could do the same. So I'll just copy and paste this over here. So it's const O, which is equal to this shape. And then it's whatever, low dash dot has. So O, and then let's go straight for C dot, dot D dot E. And I'll also have to console log see i'm already doing a lot more than i should be doing just to see how this thing works so it's true so if i put an f here then it should be false in the output uh, but i'm already doing more than i should be doing and i'm only testing it in the browser so if these kinds of libraries should have the same behavior on the browser and on on the back end so on the server side um, they were somewhat wrongly called isomorphic, more correctly called universal because they work the same in the browser and on the server. Uh, but as you can see, I'm already doing more than I should be doing. Um, I have to search for the library. So that's the equivalent of my require call over there. Then I have to create the object and I have to console log it either way. This is how you do it. If you shoulder surf people and you see them struggling uh, with modules and having no clue on how to how to test them properly and see if if they have the functionality they're looking for, then go ahead and recommend this video to them. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to follow me on social media. I'm mildly active. Uh, I have this blog and this website. I don't know where you're watching this video right now. So this is my website, oprah.rocks. I try to write as constant and consistent as possible. Uh, and yeah, I'm also on Twitter. Yeah, make sure to follow me everywhere. Like basically, this handle is all mine everywhere, everywhere you you go on any social media platform. I am that guy at Oprah Rocks. Okay, catch you in the next one. Bye.